What's up guys, it's Dwayne, back again for another video, back in for the reaction, today's a great wonderful day because it's a Finland day and I'm going to be learning about the Finnish language, so without further ado, let's get into this reaction, let's go. Hey Paul, when are you going to finish? What do you mean? When are you going to finish talking about italki? Oh, I'm already finished. Okay, good, because you have a language video to make. Oh, that's right, what language is it today? Finnish. Finnish. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'm finished. That's so funny. I never really thought of that, that Finnish as a language name means Finnish as in done in English. That's just never really dawned on me. But obviously, yeah, we have that word in our language. Hello everyone, welcome to the Lang Focus channel and my name is Paul. Today I'm going to talk about the Finnish language. Okay. As you probably know, Finnish is the majority language spoken in Finland. It has I about 5.4 <clears throat> million native speakers, with 4.9 million of them living in Finland, which is about 90% of the population of Finland. It's one of the two okay. official languages of Finland along with Swedish, which is spoken by about 5% of the population. So I've heard this, that 5% of the population speaks Swedish, but I think the type of... I think I heard the type of Swedish they speak has a very heavy kind of like Finnish accent am i right am i wrong let me know in the comment section below um but it is mutually intelligible so swedish people do understand i think so uh, that's interesting though very very interesting population and there are also finnish speaking minorities across the border in russia in norway and in sweden you may ah. have seen my video on the north germanic languages it's this one right here and you might remember that i specifically excluded finnish from that video that's because even though finland is a nordic country with mm. geographic and historical connections to scandinavia the finnish language is not a north germanic language in fact it's not even that's why it's so hard to learn. In an Indo-European language, it is part of the Finnic language group, which is a branch of the Uralic language family. Other members of the Finnic group are Hungarian. Estonian, Karelian, Ludic, Veps, Ingrian, oh. Vodic, and Livonian. But Finnish is the most widely spoken language in the Finnic language group. All the Finnic languages developed right. from Proto-Finnic, which was spoken around 3,000 years ago. The first stage was early Proto-Finnic. Then during the middle Proto-Finnic period, some changes took place in that language and it split into two. Proto-Samic, the ancestor of the Samic languages, and okay. late Proto-Finnic, which ultimately became the most recent ancestor of all the Finnic languages. It's worth noting that Finnish contains a significant number of Germanic loanwords, some of them which are clearly ancient in origin. For example, mm. Kuningas, which means king, Duoli, which means chair, Duoli. and it comes from the same root as stool, and Koulu, which means school. Koulu. From words like these, we can see that the ancient Finns had extensive contact with Germanic peoples. Late Proto-Finnic diverged into three dialects, Eastern Proto-Finnic, Northern Proto-Finnic, and Southern Proto-Finnic. These okay. three dialects of Late Proto-Finnic mixed with each other and the resulting mixes of influences developed into the dialects that make up the Finnish language. Language is so interesting, like the way language has just evolved and, and just keeps on keeps on evolving if you think about language today it's still evolving like if you even recently like now in england if you hear how english speakers in english people <laughs> english people speak compared to how they spoke in um i don't know back in the 50s or 1940s more, more 1940s, 1930s. The very Queen's English. Da, 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 da. And they spoke... <laughs> I can't do it, but... They spoke very, like, proper and very... Even, like, TV presenters had a way of speaking. Da, 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 da. A very, like, weird-sounding... Queen's English-sounding. And now, regional accents have developed um, in the past 50, 60 years. Um, so language is constantly changing. And in England, we use words, long words from other countries as well, especially a lot of American words because of the media and TV. Um, language is just so interesting. And um, Finnish sounds like it's a very complex language that has developed out of a lot of different movements of people. So, this, yeah, this is interesting. Around the 12th century and 13th century CE, Sweden conquered Finland and made it a province of their country. And for the next few hundred years, Swedish was the language, language. of administration. And during mm. this time, Middle Low German was the lingua franca of commerce in the area, and Latin was ah. the language of religion. 
Swedish and Middle Low German left an additional Germanic influence. Wait, on wait, he's speaking very, really, speaking very really, really fast. But he just said that Swedish was the language of administration. So basically, people who ruled Finland, uh, Swedish was the language. So they were basically trying to colonize and make Swedish the widely spoken language in Finland at that time. And Middle Low German was the lingua franca of commerce. So all the countries in Europe or pretty much in Europe, spoke low Germ middle low German to do business. And then it says Latin was the language of religion. So confusing, like three different languages to like get by <laughs> daily uh, when you're uh, living in Finland in this time. Uh, Latin was the language of religion. I think, yeah, it was the language of religion for uh, the most of Europe was Latin, I think, um, at that time. Was the language of religion. Swedish and Middle Low German left an additional Germanic influence on Finnish, which during that time was strictly a language of daily communication. Finnish right. did not really become a written language until the 16th century when a Finnish bishop named Mikhail Agricola created the first comprehensive writing system for the language. He based that system on the orthography of German, Swedish, and Latin, and it still forms the basis of the Finnish writing system today, although there have been changes since then. In 1809, okay. Russia seized Finland from Sweden in a war and made it an autonomous state as part of the Russian Empire. The official language right. and the language of the elite remained Swedish, but Finnish national feeling and a desire to make the Finnish language dominant began to increase. In 1835, these feelings were amplified by the publication of Kalevala, a work of epic poetry written by Elias Lundrot, with <clears throat> stories from Karelian and Finnish folklore and mythology. Lundrot also played an important role in the development of standard Finnish. In 1863, Finnish became an official language in Finland alongside the Swedish language, and they That's both good. remain official languages today. And with That's so good. I'm so happy that Finnish people decided to really campaign to preserve the language um, because it's important, like the history of people. Languages, all languages should be preserved, um, and no language should be stomped out because another group of people enter the country and decide to make their language the official language. Um, yeah, I think all languages should be preserved. I think uh, when I think of England, when I think of the United Kingdom, sorry, um, there are a few languages that are trying to be preserved now, and they're really trying to bring them back to life because of time. For, there's been a period of time where the, the languages have just been pushed away and pushed down and stomped out like Welsh. Welsh is something that's like only spoken in Wales and Wales is a small country and because it shares a border with such a humongous country compared to Wales, which is England, the English language has made its way through Wales and most people speak English, but there's been a, a, a conscious effort to maintain the Welsh language, which is great. Um, and there's a lot of Gaelic languages, like in Scotland, that have been preserved. Um, Irish as well. And it's really important because English is such a powerhouse language where everyone around the world speaks English that any countries around England, they need to hold on to their languages to make sure that they're, they're preserved and used today. And I'm, I'm happy that Finnish is still alive. Otherwise, I wouldn't have any Finnish content. I wouldn't be learning about Finland really if you didn't if you spoke English it wouldn't be as interesting but you speak Finnish which is great and with a new sense of national identity emerging Finland eventually gained independence from Russia in 1917 before standard Finnish was created the Finnish language consisted of a number of dialects that could be roughly divided into eastern and western dialects the western dialects are the ones upon which standard Finnish was largely based from what I understand, these days the dialects mostly consist of differences in accent. But outside of Finland, right. there are a few interesting dialects that are officially considered to be different languages, even though they are intelligible with standard Finnish. This includes the Karelian language in Russia, Meankieli, which is spoken by a Finnish minority in Sweden, and okay. Kven, which is spoken by a minority in Norway. Wow, okay. So what is the Finnish language like? Well, it shares some features with the other members of the Finnic language group. Some of those features are no grammatical gender. There is no distinction between masculine, feminine, or neuter. Not even in the personal pronouns. Han wow. means both Han. he and she. And interestingly, Finland was one of the first countries to grant women the right to vote. And it was one of the first to have a female president. So there you go. There you go. You have no gendered languages. And 
your language is not gendered and you're pro women's rights. Maybe it's a thing. Maybe we should get rid of our gender in our language. No he and she. No her and him. <laughs> Let's get rid of those in our language. Let's just use a new word like hum. Hum. That'll be our new word to mean <laughs> male and female. I don't know. I'm just making it up. But I think that's really cool. So maybe gender equality is just built into the language and way of thinking. Hey, you never know. Next, no articles. Articles are the words like a or the in English. Oh. English speakers often wonder how you can communicate without those articles, but the context usually provides enough meaning that you don't actually need the articles. Next, Finnish has some okay. prepositions. In English, those are words showing location or relationship, like to or at or on. on. But Finnish has many more postpositions. These are similar to prepositions in function, but they come after the word that they add meaning to, rather than before. Oh, Here's an okay. example sentence with the postposition. Tori on kaupungin keskellä. This sentence means the market is in the center of town. Tori means market. On is similar to is. Kaupungi is town. The end at the end of kaupungi is the genitive case showing possession. And then after oh. kaupungi we have keskela, which is the postposition, P- which means in the middle. the middle. So it's a postposition because it comes after the noun kaupungi. Next, lots right. of grammatical cases. 15 to be precise. If it works. That means that nouns, personal pronouns, and adjectives have 15 different forms depending on their function in the sentence. We can't look at all 15 right now, but let's look at an example. Finnish has the accusative case, which marks a direct object, and that's common in lots of languages. It can be shown with an N at the end of the word, or it can be shown with nothing, just left blank at the end of the word. But there is also something called the partitive case. This also marks a direct object if the object is only part of a whole, or if the action is incomplete, or if the action is negative. This sentence means, will you eat the fish? Shut means you eat. K is a question marker. Kala is fish. Fish. And the N at the end of kala is the accusative case, showing that the action will be completed and that the whole fish will be eaten. Ah. Means, do you eat fish? So again, shut is you eat. K is the question marker. Kala is fish. And the a at the end of kala is the partitive case, which shows ah. that there's no completed action. There's no completed action because there's no... Okay, kalam and kala. Do you eat fish? Kala. Kalam. Will you eat the fish? Ah, I get it. It works. It works. You just have to know the rules of a language, right? Specific fish being eaten. This is just a general question. Next, you may have noticed in the above example sentences that the present tense and future tense are the same. That's right, in Finnish there is no future tense. But the future can be indicated in a couple of ways. When you see a present tense verb with an accusative case object like this, that indicates the future because it shows that the action will be complete at some point. Mm -hmm. When you see a present tense verb with the partitive case like this, that indicates present tense because the action is not a completed action, so it must be happening now. The future can also be clarified with a time expression. Here's an example demonstrating that there is no future tense in Finnish. Luen. This means I read. Luen huomenna. This means I will read tomorrow. Huomenna means tomorrow. And that time expression is what indicates that this action will take place in the future. Next, there are a lot of long words in Finnish because of agglutination and because of compound words. Finnish is an agglutinative language, meaning that words can be formed by attaching together pieces that add meaning to the word, without those Uh, pieces changing. You just attach them together. In English, we might use separate words like... That makes sense. I always wondered why your words were so long. But if you have those little pieces that connect together to attach meaning to the action that you're doing... That makes sense. Conjunctions and prepositions. But in Finnish, special endings can be added to a word stem. Here's an example starting with the word for house. Talo. 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 Talossa. Taloissa. Taloissani. Taloissanikin. Taloissanikinko. And a few additional features of Finnish. Number one, the main stress always goes on the first syllable of the word. Number two, there is no equivalent of the verb to have in Finnish. Number three, Finnish has negative verb conjugations. That means that instead of using a negation word like not, it has an entirely different form of the verb to show that it's negative. 
Finnish is clearly a very interesting wow. language that might be quite different from the languages that you're used to speaking and learning. But is Finnish as hard to learn as people different. say it is? Well, I can't tell you from personal experience, but it seems to me that if you've never learned a language from the Finnic group or from the Uralic language family before, then you'll probably have to bend your mind a little bit to understand how that language yeah. works. And that'll probably take more focus and effort than learning a language that's more similar to your own. Yeah, so it's more difficult for English speakers because it's, it's very different from the rules in the Germanic languages. So, yeah, it'll be a little bit harder to learn, but not impossible. Not impossible. I learned a lot in this video already, and it's <laughs> it's only a, a eight minute video, and I've learned a lot about the Finnish language. So I think it's very possible to learn Finnish. Your own. But as is always the case, your passion for any language or culture will carry you through the challenges of learning that language. So if exactly. you're fascinated by Finnish, you really should go for it. Okay, the question of the day. For Finnish speakers, how noticeable are the Finnish dialects today? Can you tell where a Finnish speaker is from just by hearing them speak? And a different question for yeah, people who you? studied Finnish. How challenging is Finnish to learn? Did you find it quite tough? or did um, Yeah, that's a good question that he's just posed just then. Dial um, dialects... Uh, accents how many of those are in Finland like can you tell where people are from in different parts of Finland is there a different way of the people sound different like the closer you are to the Swedish border say do you sound a bit more Swedish or a bit more melodic in the way that you speak Finnish if you if you live closer to the Russian border do you have more of a kind of Russian kind of vibe <laughs> you know or if you know you're near the is I think you guys share a maritime or, or, or water between Estonia, right? Do you, is there a, an area, a, a coastal town where you sound a bit more Estonian? Let me know. I don't know. I don't really know much. Uh, let me know, like, if you can tell the difference between people and the geographic location of where they live in Finland. It's really fascinating. Uh, guys, thanks for sticking around. Thanks for watching. Until the next one, I will see you soon.